What is going on everybody and welcome to part two of our supercomputing parallel programming slash high performance computing tutorial series. Um, kind of leading from, or leading from, coming from uh, building our Raspberry Pi supercomputer, but you can take part obviously with any uh, supercomputer or even a single node computer that you're just uh, programming and making your own kind of pseudo supercomputer. So, with that, uh, we've now installed MPI for Pi. We did test the demo, make sure it, made sure it worked, which was happening here. Showed you guys how to make a machine file, or not really how to make a machine file, but what a machine file was. Um, and now we're ready to actually start building our own supercomputer now. So the next thing that we want to do is just make a really simple uh, script here that kind of helps us figure out and slowly start to understand. So this is kind of confusing when you first start working with this stuff. It's almost like programming was for me initially where there's a lot of uncertainty about like, what can I do this or can I do this? You know, and that kind of stuff where you're not really sure if you're gonna get away with doing a lot of stuff. So it's gonna be a lot of trial and error for you for sure, but hopefully I can help you guys. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and make a really basic script. So again, what I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is let me see if I even have WinSCP up, which I do not. So I'm going to bring up a WinSCP because I'm on a Windows machine. What a loser. Uh, and because SCP doesn't work for me for whatever reason otherwise. So, so anyways, uh, for all the code and stuff, I'll type in the code right here. Uh, otherwise, um, or what I meant to say, all the like commands, I'll type it in here and we'll see the output. But for the code, I'm actually just gonna code it in a blank uh, Pi document so you guys can follow it really simply. Uh, mostly f the reason I wanna do that is so it's it's still color coded. Uh, so with like highlighting and all of that is because when you code in here, like the one that we're gonna code today is pretty basic, but as we go on, it, it's gonna be pretty helpful to be able to see the differences. So you can do whatever you want if you wanna code uh, the Python part straight through Nano, that's totally fine. I don't really care how you do it, but this is the way that I'm going to do it. So just so you know, so I'm going to code it here, and then when I'm done, I'm going to save it, and then I'm going to SCP it over to uh, my nodes. Now keep in mind, you're going to have to SCP it to both nodes. If you just move it to the master node, it's going to be like, oh, this file doesn't exist, and you're going to be like pulling your hair out because you just put it there, um, but you'll realize that, oops, I did not move it to my worker node. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Let me uh, situate this video or this uh, screen real quick. All right, so uh, here we go. As usual, basically, you know, everything you've got to import some stuff. For now, the only thing we need to do is from MPI for Pi import MPI, which is our message passing interface. Next thing we want to do is we're going to say com equals MPI dot com underscore world. And then what we can do from this is there's a lot of different commands that we can uh, pull from this. We can get um, the name, the rank, the total size of our uh, supercomputer, and all kinds of fun stuff. So uh, we can query this for a lot of data. Um, but anyways, moving on. Uh, so then what we're going to say is we're just going to do print um, hi. And then, let's see, hi, my rank is and then comma com dot rank so com is just referencing this and then dot rank is referencing um, mpi dot com world so that's it now what we're going to want to do is save this and again i am going to scp this to uh, both of my nodes in fact i wasn't even prepared for that uh, let me move this out of the way and what we ought to do is let's go cd uh, here let's see Let's put this on, I'm gonna put mine on my desktop. So slash home slash pi slash desktop. Okay, so I'm gonna make their supercomputing tutorial. So SCT and LS. Okay, um, so I'm gonna put my files into that, into there. I'm gonna do the same thing on my other, this is my little worker node. So again, CD this. Desktop, uh, make dir sct. Okay, so now I've got the folders there, and now I'm going to scp uh, this script that we like just made in Python here. This one, 
I'm going to SCT this script into the home slash pi slash desktop slash SCT directory. Again, don't forget to put it in both directories. And anybody who is on uh, a Windows machine, um, I figure I might as well just show you guys what this is. So like this is your SCT. It's called like Win or SCT. <laughs> I'm going to say that a lot now because we called this SCT. Um, the program is called WinSCP. And it basically is like a... You can think of it a lot like a file transfer protocol client where you can just click and drag this stuff in there. Uh, be, people that are on like Mac and all of that can use SCP just straight from the command line. That's not going to work for Windows machines. So, But you can download WinSCP um, and you can do what you want with it. So anyways, uh, what I'm going to do now is drag these folders over or these uh, pi files over like I've been saying I'm going to do. And now what you'll do is we'll come over here, and now we're in the desktop. Um, let's see, it shouldn't change anything. So we'll go mpi run dot open mpi number of uh, processings two processors rather dash machine file is located in home pi mpi testing. And in fact, I think I'm, so I don't have to, well, we'll just leave that for now. <laughs> MPI testing slash machine file, and then Python, and we're going to use Python to run sct2.py. That should do it. Uh, let's go. Can't open. So let's see, what did we do wrong? Oh, we're not in... Um, the SCT directory. So, CD SCT. Let's try again. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. So now you've got. Um, it did find the file, and hi, my rank is you know zero, and hi, my rank is one. And now what I'll do just for kicks is this is my little worker node here. Uh, we'll just delete uh, SCT2, run it again, and as you can see, you get this, you know, error, no such file or directory, because it has to be located on both, um, both nodes. Now, interestingly enough, though, you can kind of have a good old time, uh, because you just need the same file name. You could change... Uh, the actual contents of that file. So some people what they'll do is they'll have a, a master node file and then they'll have all the worker node have a different file completely. So anyways, and that way because the master node might have a large set of uh, operations that it needs to know and the worker nodes might have a large set of operations that they need to know and they don't necessarily need to share them so it's a waste of code to have it there. Um, so anyways, uh, that's going to include the most basic version uh, of the script. So let me go ahead and drag uh, reference. Let's see, here we go. Uh, what we did again, so we just import MPI for Pi, what we just downloaded basically. Then we just specified the most uh, basic thing that you're going to have to do is, you know, com for communications equals MPI.com underscore world. And then from there, we can gather all kinds of information. The first one we've gathered is rank, but as time goes on, uh, we'll show you guys a few others that we can grab. And then it just simply says, hi, my rank is what? And it runs through this one time on every instance, uh, which just so happens to be we only had two. But again, you can run this on multiple instances. So we could do something like this, three, whoops, three, hit enter, wait for it. And you see we have a zero, a two, or I mean a one, two, and a zero. So now we have three things, but we only had two files in that machine file, uh, or two files, two IPs in that machine file. So by that same token, your machine file could simply have one IP address in it. You could say MP2, and there you go. Or you can say MP4 with only two, and you can kind of mimic having four nodes without actually needing four nodes. 
So that's going to conclude uh, the next part in this parallel programming high performance computing and supercomputing tutorial series. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments or whatever, feel free to leave those below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.